Hey students, it's Mr. Mannix, and in this lecture we're going to talk about actual mechanical advantage and efficiency. Up to this point we spent a bunch of time talking about ideal mechanical advantage of simple machines. Um, but in ideal mechanical advantage we're assuming that um, they are ideal machines, which means that they are 100% efficient. They lose no energy to heat because of friction, and we know that's just not true um, in any case we're going to deal with in the real world. In the real world, there is friction, so machines are slightly inefficient. Actual mechanical advantage is always slightly less than ideal mechanical advantage because we lose some energy due to friction. So um, let's start out with a quick review of how to calculate ideal mechanical advantage for different levers. OK, so first of all, um, ideal mechanical advantage usually has something to do with the input distance versus the output distance. If we are looking at a ramp, we take the length of the ramp, let's say this is 5 meters and the height is 1 meter, and we take the input distance, or the length of the ramp, divided by the output distance, or the height of the ramp, and so it would equal 5 over 1, and you'd have an ideal mechanical advantage of 5 if there were no friction. If we were to take a lever, we measure the length of the input arm versus the output arm. So if the input arm, where we put our force, let's say we push down over here, and the input arm is, let's say, 10 centimeters long, and then we're lifting a block over here that sits just 2 centimeters from the fulcrum, then I would take input distance over output distance is equal to 10 centimeters divided by 2 centimeters is equal to, again, 5. My ideal mechanical advantage would be 5. Um, and then finally, uh, our pulley system is um, basically the same concept, but there's uh, one more trick to deciding it. So we could take a simple pulley here. This is a single fixed pulley where I'm pulling downwards. And I would say here that ideally there's only one string pulling up on this block. Therefore, I'd say it probably has an ideal mechanical advantage of one. And if I pulled this rope out one meter, then this uh, block would lift up one meter. So my input distance would be the same as my output distance. That would be one over one ideal mechanical advantage of one. Or let's say we had a pulley um, with this pulley being fixed and this pulley being movable um, with a block hanging off down here there are one two ropes pulling upwards on this this would have an ideal mechanical advantage of two and again you'd have to pull out two meters of rope to lift this one meter. So it's always true that the input distance is going to have to be bigger than the output distance to have an ideal mechanical advantage of greater than one. All right, so how do we calculate actual mechanical advantage? Actual mechanical advantage is actually calculated the same exact way for all machines, and it equals the output force divided by the input force. In other words, if the ideal mechanical advantage is how much the machine should multiply your input force in ideal conditions, the actual mechanical advantage is how much the machine actually, in real life, multiplies your input force. So let's talk about this in a real world example. Let's see you have a ramp, and it really doesn't matter how long the ramp is. Let's say we have a box, and this box um, is a 100 Newton box and to push this up at a ramp at a constant speed you have to apply a force of 50 newtons. That means this has an, an actual mechanical advantage of 2. My output force, I'm lifting a 100 newton box divided by my input force is 50. 100 divided by 50 is 2. My actual mechanical advantage is 2. That's no matter how long the ramp is, that's my actual mechanical advantage. If I lifted a um, this 100 newton box 
with a pulley and it took um, 75 newtons of force to lift this box then 100 divided by 75 would equal a mechan actual mechanical advantage of 1.33 repeating so no matter what my pulley system was, if that's the force it took, this would be an actual mechanical advantage of 1.33. So actual mechanical advantage always equals output force divided by input force, no matter which um, simple machine you are using. And then finally, efficiency. Efficiency is telling us how close is our actual machine to being an ideal machine. Um, how close is it to not losing any energy due to uh, friction. And you calculate it like this. You take the actual mechanical advantage divided by the ideal mechanical advantage and then you times that number by 100 percent to turn that into a uh, a percentage. So what does that mean? That means that if the actual mechanical advantage was exactly as big as the ideal mechanical advantage you would have let's say that uh, the actual mechanical advantage was 2 and the ideal was also 2 then 2 divided by 2 equals 1 times 100 percent would equal 100 percent and I would have 100 percent efficiency that means no energy would be lost at all and we'd have a 100 percent efficient machine now in the real world okay you never have a 100 percent efficient machine. And you also never, you it's impossible to have a machine with greater than a hundred percent efficiency. Let me say that again. You will never ever have in the real world a 100 percent efficient machine and you most certainly will never have one with a greater than 100 percent efficiency you always lose a little bit of energy due to friction even if it's very close you know if you had a lever with a really smooth fulcrum you know the actual man mechanical advantage might be really close to the ideal but it's still gonna be a little bit less And if you have something like a ramp where you have lots of friction push pushing something up a ramp well then you're definitely going to have a much lower actual mechanical advantage and the ideal mechanical advantage. Um, how could you increase the efficiency of a machine? Well, to increase the efficiency, we have to reduce energy loss to friction as heat. And how do we do that? Well, um, you know, possibly if you had a pulley system, maybe you could grease the pulley. Grease would reduce, um, it would redu reduce the friction on the pulley, reduce the amount of energy loss to friction. You could also uh, grease or otherwise lubricate a ramp and that would increase that ramps efficiency um, if you're pushing an object up a ramp you could put wheels on the object you're pushing okay so if you were to push a um, you know a person in a wheelchair up a ramp that's a lot easier than uh, pushing them, you know, sitting on a box or something like that. So wheels reduce friction and therefore they would increase the efficiency of a machine. So again, anything that reduces friction increases efficiency. And one more thing, anything that increases efficiency increases the actual mechanical advantage. Um, if you're losing uh, less energy to heat, you're going to have larger actual mechanical advantage, but it does not affect ideal mechanical advantage. So increased efficiency equals increased AMA actual mechanical advantage but does not equal that's what the slash this thing means does not equal increased ideal mechanical advantage that is solely dependent on the size and shape of your ramp or your lever, um, it's not affected by its efficiency. Okay, so let's try some sample calculations. You use a crowbar to pry loose a large boulder. 
The boulder weighs 9,000 newtons, but you're able to lift the boulder by applying a force of 500 newtons to the crowbar. What is the actual mechanical advantage of the crowbar? Now, they don't give us enough information here to calculate ideal mechanical advantage. We don't know the length of it, but we don't need to. We know that actual mechanical advantage, AMA, equals my output force, and I know that I have an output of 9,000 newtons. That's what I'm uh, lifting. So it equals output force over input force. So it equals 9,000 newtons divided by 500 newtons is all the force I have to apply. Therefore, my actual mechanical advantage equals 9,000 divided by five, uh, 500 equals 18. I would have an actual mechanical advantage of 18. Actual mechanical advantage and ideal mechanical advantage, remember, have no units. All right, when you apply a 50 newton force to a wrench, there is 600 newtons of force applied to the nut. Um, what is the actual mechanical advantage of the wrench? So again, I have to take um, my actual mechanical advantage is equal to your output force over your input force. So my output is 600 newtons applied to the nut. So it equals 600 newtons divided by uh, 50 newtons, which you apply to the wrench. 600 divided by 50 equals 12. Okay, then it says if the ideal mechanical advantage of the wrench is 13, what's the efficiency? Remember, efficiency equals the AMA, the actual mechanical advantage divided by the ideal mechanical advantage. So it equals the 12 divided by 13. which is 0.923 times 100% equals 92.3% efficient. Okay, you use a six foot ramp to push a lawnmower into the back of a truck that is three feet off the ground. The lawnmower weighs 100 newtons. You push the lawnmower up the ramp with a force of 70 newtons. So it asks me, what is the actual mechanical advantage, what is the ideal mechanical advantage, and what is the efficiency? So remember, actual mechanical advantage is determined by output force over input force. And I'm getting an output force of 100 newtons because that's what the lawnmower weighs. And you have to push on the lawnmower with a force of 70 newtons. So 100 divided by 70, and you would get 1.43 is my actual mechanical advantage. Now, what is the ideal mechanical advantage of the ramp? Remember, ideal mechanical advantage equals my input distance over my output distance. So I switch from force to distance here. Input distance over output distance. So it equals, um, my input distance is six feet. It's a six foot ramp. Um, it's the three feet off the ground, so my output distance is three. So my ideal mechanical advantage is equal to two, which means that um, my efficiency is something less than 100%. Efficiency is equal to the AMA over the IMA. So it equals 1.43 over two. And I get 0.715 times 100% equals 71.5% efficiency. All right, uh, that's it for this video. Um, and uh, hopefully that will help you with the practice quiz, which you will take on my big campus.